So today we're going to focus on God is one spirit. All of these other, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God, have to be separate as well. Right. So now you start to count. We got a lot of spirits. We got a lot of spirits going on. So that doesn't make sense because it doesn't align with the body of scripture. You didn't have to just throw away the scripture. Everything. From, from the first one <laughs> say that he's one. And that's the danger of not looking at the body of scripture. You have to take all of these scriptures and, and let God reveal to you what he is saying about himself. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Gather Talks. Today, we will be continuing our series with revealing the true identity of God. So today, we're going to focus on God is one spirit. God clearly reveals in his word that he is one spirit. So now we're going to take some time to go through some scripture and really explain what the word of God has to say about God being one spirit. Okay, before we move on, if you have not watched the other videos... Mm -hmm. You probably should just not even watch this one. Go Sorry. back <laughs> and watch all of them because you need yes. a clear, yes. good foundation yes. before yes. you can go ahead into the stuff we're about to talk about today. So, and we want, I'm going to read Ephesians 4 and 4. And it reads, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in, one hope of your calling. So like Nefertiria said, the title the title of this episode is God is one spirit. And we have scripture evidence that he says there is one spirit. Mm -hmm. So we want to we have that means we have to explain the rest of what we're about to get into. So you have to figure you gotta stay and watch how we, you know, break it down for you. Yeah, and so we're just gonna continue to read scripture to highlight this point that God the Father and the Holy Spirit are not separate persons, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we're establishing. And if you've been with us this entire time on the series, and to Nina's point, if you haven't, <laughs> this is your second warning. <laughs> Go back and watch the other video. We've, we've established that God is the Spirit, and we're just going to continue to build off that foundation. But your foundation got to be right, or your building going to be shaky, right? So let's go to John 4 and 24. And this is Jesus Christ speaking. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Let's look at another scripture. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Spirits are invisible, and they are immortal and eternal. God is a spirit. So that's just a quick rehasher. If you want, you need a refresher to go into more depth on that. Refer to our first Gather Talks video in this series. So, as Donovan said, God the Father is a spirit. He is invisible. He is immortal. But not only that, God the Father is also holy, and that's how we get the term Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So not that there is a different person from God the Father who's called the Holy Spirit, and then we have God the Father. No, God the Father is a spirit who is holy, which constitutes and makes him the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at three distinct scriptures which speaks to this. So the first scripture we're going to turn to is Leviticus 19, and we're going to look at verse 2. And again, that's Leviticus 19 and verse 2. And I'm, I'm going to be reading these from the New King James Version, as you'll see on the screen. So this verse says, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy holy so what god the father because this is god the father speaking during this time in this particular scripture mm -hmm. and he's speaking to the children of israel and he's telling them they have to be holy because he is holy and again we know from scripture that god the father is a spirit so as a spirit who is holy what do you have you have holy spirit now let's look at two more verses so we're going to turn to psalm 
78 and we're going to look at verse 41. So in Psalm 78 and 41, this says, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. So again, this is speaking about God the Father, how in the wilderness, through the children of Israel's disobedience, they kept limiting the things that God the Father wanted to do um, for them. And it refers to God the Father as the Holy One of Israel. Holy One, He is a Spirit, Holy Spirit. Let's look at one more for good measure in Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 3. So in Isaiah 6 and 3, it says, And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So again, as they're crying out, they're referring to God the Father as holy, 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 and he is a spirit. Therefore, God the Father is the Holy Spirit. But we're not done. We're going to take a look at way more scripture to solidify this point. Exactly. So like Tremiko said, we see that God the Father is holy and he is the Holy Spirit. We also see that God the Father manifests himself in flesh as Christ the Son to save mankind. Christ the Spirit is actually the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and we just saw that in Scripture. What we see in Scripture is that the terms the the spirit of god the holy spirit the spirit of the lord the spirit my spirit and the spirit of christ are all used interchangeably referring to one spirit of god the father so god already said in his word that he's one spirit that would contradict if he yeah, would be saying exactly. that hey i'm one two three six different exactly. people if that was the case <laughs> yeah so let's go to scripture and we'll dive in a little bit deeper stop right here and dive a little bit deeper as to what the word of god says so go to matthew 12 and 28 but if I, and this is Christ speaking, cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come unto you. So there we see Christ is also speaking. He's saying by the Spirit of God, which we know that God is one. So as, you know, God the Father manifested himself in flesh, we'll just kind of start and take a look at a couple of things in relation to this scripture. Because, again, the deity inside of Christ, that spirit, is the Holy Spirit. And we already went through how Christ was conceived to take a look at that. But I want to take a look at a couple of things here just to point out. Because um, let's actually just go to Matthew 3 and 16. And we'll just kind of talk it out. In Matthew 3 and 16, it says, When he, being Christ, had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold... The heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. So what I want to point out is we're seeing that Christ is saying he's casting out spirits by the Spirit of God. We're seeing that his baptism, and, and this was for um, the people that were standing around so that they could see that Christ actually is the one who was prophesied to come. Yep. So that's why they saw the Spirit of God descending down like a dove. Not that that's when he received the Spirit of the Father. He already had that on the inside mm -hmm. because God the Father is Christ manifested in flesh. But I want you to see here that with Matthew 12 and 28 and Matthew 3, 16, we're seeing the Spirit of God. But talking about this same Spirit that was at Christ's baptism, Matthew describes it as the Spirit of God. But let's look at how Luke describes it. In Luke chapter 4 and 1, talking about the same incident, it says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So in one version, it's referring to the Spirit as the Spirit of God. and another version, it's referring to it as the Holy Spirit. Going back to what I just showed you, God the Father is the Holy Spirit. And that is what was going on here. So it's not two different spirits or three different spirits. There's one spirit here. 
Um, and then one other one in that same book of Luke chapter four, if you jump down to verse 18, it reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And this is Christ talking. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So he is referring to, it is by the spirit of the Lord. So you have the spirit of God. Then you have someone saying the Holy Spirit. Then you have Christ saying the spirit of the Lord. These are not three different spirits that are being referred to. It's all one and the self same spirit, which is God the Father, who is the spirit. Yeah. And what's crazy is, and this is a thing that we always say and gather. Make it make sense. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're saying that the Holy Spirit is a separate person from God the Father, you then have to say who all is of, a spirit. who is a spirit. So that will make two spirits. So that's spirits. two spirits. All of these other, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God, have to be separate as well. Right. So now you start to count. We got a lot of spirits. We got a lot of spirits going on. So that doesn't make sense because it doesn't align with the body of scripture. On the other side, if you say, well, no, no, Donovan, that's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that <laughs> all of those things are the Holy Spirit, which is a separate person from God the Father, who is a spirit. But then when we look at scripture, we see that God is a spirit. He is holy. So that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they can. So that's the same person. Exactly. So either way, you it doesn't make sense because that's not what Scripture is saying. What Scripture is saying, God the Father is a spirit. He is holy. He is the Holy Spirit. And you yeah. have to just throw away the Scripture. Everything. From, from the first one <laughs> saying that he's one. Yeah. We yeah. Just, you yeah. Know, and so he has, has to, what's the one, right? Yeah. yeah. You would have it's to throw spirit. away all those that exactly. say he's one spirit. He Because we got eight now. Yep. We were starting with, with two. Now we had eight. We would have to be like, okay, well, he must have not knew. Throw the whole book away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At the end of the day. <laughs> because that, that don't make sense. Yeah. And we're, and we're trying to make it light so you guys stay engaged. But but yeah. this is this is serious. When you come to scripture with your own preconceived notions, instead of saying, God revealed to me what you're saying. This is not our personal thoughts that we've interpreted from this. Yeah. This is what God is, has revealed to us through the body of scripture. Not one that we yeah. decided to take right. and create a doctrine and run with. That's good because that's what I was going to say. That's the danger of not looking at the body of scripture. You have to take all of these scriptures and, and let God reveal to you what he is saying about himself. We don't come to God and say, this is who you are. He comes to us through his word and says, this is who I am. Yeah. And we can't cut him off mid conversation. We have to listen to the whole conversation of God the Father through the volume of the scriptures. Yeah. And, no, that's, and that's really good because it's one thing that we do at, at work, right? When you go to a new meeting and they ask everybody around the room to introduce themselves. So I can be like, hey, Shamika, I'm dying. And she can't be like, stop. <laughs> No, you are <laughs> right. I have to introduce myself yeah. to her, and this is these are my roles and what I do for the company or whatever the context of it. Yeah. But she can't just stop me mid sit like, no, I'm gonna tell you who, <laughs> who you, you are. are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Take okay, that too lightly, yeah. but also God the Father refers to His own Spirit, yeah, because it is His. So He explains how He will give it to everyone. He will pour it out. And we know that today as the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. So we're going to look at scriptures that reveal um, this principle. So in Acts 2, 18, it reads, And on my, being God the Father, men servants, and on my, being God the Father, maid servants, I, God the Father, will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So what the scripture is say, saying is God the Father is here telling the people that he will pour out his spirit and his children will receive it. And we know that today as receiving the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and exactly. being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So that's our, we already made the connection that that Tremiko said that the, the God is a spirit and he's holy. Therefore, 
it is his spirit and it is holy. So it's the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, and the this promise was made that God the Father made to, to give his Holy Spirit to those whom will receive him. Mm -hmm. God the Father refers to the Holy Spirit as my spirit mm -hmm. because it is his. Paul, Paul cites this prophecy of Joel after about 120 were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So Paul even refers to God the Father mentioning this while he's filling people with the Holy Spirit, who is God the Father. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what another interesting thing about talking about, you know, God the Father, who is the Holy Spirit is, you know, David, he was praying this prayer and we can find it. Um, I'll, I may put it up. I'm not sure. But in Psalm 51 and verse 11, um, David was in prayer to God the Father and he makes a statement and, and it will be going across. He makes a statement in Psalm 51 and 11. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So again, the scriptures just keep reaffirming themselves that the Holy Spirit is God the Father who is a spirit and God the Father who is a spirit is the Holy Spirit. The terms are just being used interchangeably. Yeah. They're synonymous with one another. So when people receive the Holy Spirit, what you're receiving is the Spirit of God, God the Father. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we're going to keep going forward, but there's more terms to refer to the Spirit of God the Father, which we now see as being referred to as the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go through some of those other terms that the scriptures use to refer to God the Father Spirit. And one of the things that we continue to emphasize and build on through this series is you have to look at the body of scripture. Yeah. Because to separate the Holy Spirit as this separate person mm -hmm. yeah. and say God the Father is a spirit, well then whose spirit am I being filled with? Yeah. Right? That, that's the question I yeah. gotta ask. Well, exactly. whose spirit is David praying? Don't take away from me. Yeah. Like these are the, you can't just make these statements. Right. Mm -hmm. And then don't support them with scripture because now you, I, it leads me to ask right. more questions. Well, what spirit is David talking about? Take, right. Cause he says what? your presence. And then he says your no. Holy Spirit that they either, they're the same or we need to find another scripture where yeah. we see the Holy Spirit personifying itself as people have personified it as a separate from God the Father. Right. Who is a spirit. Because right now, everybody in scripture, is they're, they're not confused. They're clear that this mm -hmm. is one of the stuff same person, which is God the Father. Gotcha. Yeah, and on top of that, the Bible tells us that anybody who rejects this is like, let's just go to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. Because it tells us, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but you're rejecting God who has also given us his Holy Spirit, which we know that the Holy Spirit is God, God, the Father's Spirit. Sorry, tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> that is, say that three times fast. Yeah. And then go ahead also, because we have more scriptures too, in Romans 8 and 9. Um, I'll give you a second to go there. Romans 8 and 9. <laughs> but... You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, not, not, I'm sorry. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So it clearly tells us that you're none of his if you don't have his Holy Spirit. And in this one scripture, yeah. we got three different exactly. references to yeah. the same thing. Thank spirit. you. Yeah. Thank you. You got the Spirit, yes. the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of Christ. So if we stick with this, the Holy Spirit is separate. Who are these people? <laughs> 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 I still got God the Father and the Holy Spirit on this. Exactly. So that that sentence in itself, they have to, if you are okay with saying that. Okay, this can't be three different spirits. This has to be, they're talking about one spirit, but they're talking about the, the spirit that lives within you, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So that that automatically can, it has to be that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we know God is a spirit and he's like, it all adds up. It all is like math. It adds together. Exactly. You just have to take the time exactly. to, to read and comprehend and take in and actually just make it make sense. And the fact that, again, if you go back and watch the previous episodes, God the Father 
manifested himself in the flesh as Christ. Yep. That's why it says, if you do not have the spirit of Christ, because Christ is none other than God the Father. So if I have the spirit of Christ, the spirit that I actually have is the spirit of God the Father. Amen. And we learned that God the Father is a spirit and he's holy who is the Holy Spirit. So when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, what you're really being baptized with is the spirit of God the Father who manifested himself as Christ. Therefore, I have the spirit of Christ in me. Or I can say I have the Holy Spirit in me. Or I can say I have the spirit in me. Or I can say God's spirit in me. Meaning God the Father, which is what First Thessalonians 4 and 8 clearly just stated to us. So again, we're going to keep going further because you know we don't stop with just a few scriptures. Yeah. We are going to just pounce these down your throat so you can see what the Jit. volume... Yeah. <laughs> just so you can see the volume of how many times God is trying to reveal himself to us if we would only just pause and listen. Yeah. And even if there were three different spirits in the scripture we know the hebrews only worshiped one god they knew better and yeah. they operated like that it hebrews never worshiped uh more than one god they were yeah. a what's it called a monotheism yeah, monotheism so they only had one god so if you understand that part of it yeah. and you see three different spirits yeah you have to somehow it, not reconcile yeah. the fact that okay yeah they only worship one God, but it's three spirits in here. Yeah. yeah. They would have, they would have, um, just on the set, they would have rejected Christianity. They would have been like, ah, yeah. yeah. and we know a lot of them did reject it, but a number of people, it was a small remnant that did convert over to Christianity. Yeah. And so they would have been totally against this. Yep. Yeah. And then what's really big to what, to Nina's point, to elaborate on top of that, is Paul was persecuting the Christians because Christ from his perspective yeah. was a blasphemer yes. but because we know that God is one so you saying that you are God right you are blaspheming because you are in flesh but he had his experience on the road to Damascus he asked the Lord who are you when you told him I'm Jesus Christ that you crucified putting it all together yeah so Paul got the revelation and so him what he's writing in Romans 8 and 9, Paul is not confused. Yeah. And to Nina's point of the Hebrews who did follow after, they were not confused. They clearly know that Jesus Christ is God the Father manifested in flesh. So the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. They're all the same. Exactly. Hope you're catching on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So we're going to, let's go. Yeah. We're just going to keep going in because yeah. we want you to we're gonna look at all these scriptures. Yeah. And if you disagree you got to come with all these scriptures <laughs> to show me something yeah. different yeah. so let's go to john chapter 3 verse 34 yeah for he christ whom god the father had sent speaketh the words of god the father for god the father giveth not the spirit by measure unto him christ he didn't give him a little bit of the spirit because God, Jesus Christ is God the Father manifested in the flesh, which Amigo has said at the beginning of the video, the full divinity of Christ, the spirit in Christ is God the Father. So it's not in measure. Yeah. When we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, he pours out of his spirit into our spirit, but he didn't do that with Christ. He is in him. So he has the fullness. So Another scripture that we, and that's what it means in Colossians, um, yeah, in Colossians 2 and 9, mm -hmm. which it talks about that in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. Godhead just means deity. It doesn't mean three different people in the Godhead as is falsely taught. It means deity. Um, Godhead just means deity. There is one God, and so God the Father is that deity, and that's who is in Christ. So in 2 Corinthians 3, we're going to look at verses 17 and 18, which says, Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
and it stops there just as by the spirit of the Lord. So here we have in these two passages, the Lord is the spirit. And then it talks about by the spirit of the Lord. We're here. What it was referring to is Jesus Christ, where his spirit is. That is the spirit of the Lord. And again, we know that Christ is God, the father manifested in flesh. So Again, we're seeing these terms used interchangeably about the one spirit of God, the Father, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Christ, um, the Holy Spirit. But we're going to go further. Yep. And we see that there are several scriptures to prove that the Holy Spirit is not separate from God, the Father. So I'm just going to read two scriptures that show that um, that he's not separate and that he's one. Um, so we're going to go to Ephesians 4 and 30, and it states, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, uh, yet the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And then I'll uh, quickly go to um, Psalms 51 and 11, and that reads, Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So once again, we see that the Holy Spirit of God and your Holy Spirit is still referring to one spirit. Of God the Father. Of God yeah. the Father, yeah. It's his, it's his he spirit. He owns it. He possesses exactly. it. It is him. You cannot separate. Yeah. And it's what true. I love about the Ephesians 4 and 3, it says the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But if you're saying the Holy Spirit is a separate person, Okay, so we got two Holy Spirits yeah. now? Yeah. So how do you, my thing is, how, how do, because this is the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. So that means yeah. that person is mine. So that means that, that automatically will make them one. Because if we two, you can't be two separate people, but like he, is he a slave? Like how are you mine? <laughs> like that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. How we go. My Holy Spirit and you a whole different. Because what I heard is. Own power. Yeah. Because yeah. what I heard from the three perspective is they're co-equal. Well, if I own you, then you're not. Because yeah. uh, I mean, Tremiko ain't walking around here saying, he's mine. he's mine. My wife would have a lot there, but wait a minute. <laughs> like, no, you can't. So that doesn't even make sense. But what makes more sense is that it is me. So yep. the Holy, yeah. it's my Holy it's my Spirit, Spirit because it's, mm -hmm. it, it's me. It's mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in Isaiah 63, we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. And it reads, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them? So when it talks about they rebelled against his Holy Spirit. They're talking about God the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did Israel rebel? When they left Egypt and they were in the wilderness? That's all mm -hmm. we knew was Jehovah. That's all we knew was God the Father. So it was his Holy Spirit yep. they rebelled against. And it said he who put his Holy Spirit within them. Just like today, we have his Holy Spirit within us. And that one spirit is the spirit of God the Father. Yeah. And we just have to keep... we we. Uh, the answer is in scripture. <laughs> and you have to look at the, we done went to the Old Testament, the New, New Testament, Testament, back to the Old Testament <laughs> yep. to, con to clearly show this consistent yep. thread that the Holy Spirit is God the Father. So let's go to Matthew chapter 10 and we're going to read verse, verses 19 through 20. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Well, because they're speaking the things that they were taught of Jesus Christ, we know that that ain't talking about their birth father. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it's talking about the spirit of your, it's talking about the spirit of God, the father, yeah. Jehovah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the same account. Yeah was recorded in Luke 12, yeah. mm -hmm. verse 11 and 12. And it reads, Now when they bring you up to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about what you should answer or what you should say. 
for the Holy Spirit Come on. Mm -hmm. will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Mm -hmm. So it's the same account, but yes. in Luke's account, he says Holy Spirit like before. And in what was that? Matthew's account, he Matthew says the Spirit of your Father. Yes. yes. So now we at six. I think seven. Because <laughs> we ain't the Spirit of your Father, we just threw that one in there. So we have like seven spirits going on. So the same account, the yeah. words are used yeah. interchangeably yeah. because it's all the same. Yes. It's, it's just what you prefer. Yeah. Some people say soda, some people say pop. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's just yes. what they prefer. Yes. yes. And so um, this episode is going to be a little bit longer. Um, we're almost done. We have two more scriptures that we're going to go through. But um, I just love it because, yeah, just so there's no confusion. He had one version say the spirit of the father, another spirit, uh, another version say um, the Holy Spirit will give you what to yeah. say. One in the self saying. And what I love is. They were both there for the conversation. They didn't come away like, oh, he talking about a different thing. Yeah, exactly. What you talking about, Matthew? <laughs> no. I'm the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is, it's the same. They didn't come away confused, like we don't know who he's talking about. So yeah. just thought, this is who I think he's talking about. Like I thought he said, I thought he said, it's another spirit. Well, what? Uh, what's what's your last name? <laughs> Which one you got down? I, I exactly. This. Exactly. Like they knew the spirit of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So again, yeah. no confusion. Um, and then also, um, oh, actually there's one more scripture we're going to go through. So in first Corinthians chapter two, we're going to look at verses 11 through 12 and first Corinthians chapter two, 11 and 12 says for what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the spirit of God. And we're talking about God, the father. Verse 12 says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that have been given freely to us by God. We can't know the things that God the Father is providing for us if we don't have the spirit of God the Father in us and with us to reveal these things to us. So again, I think for me, this has been very clear yep. that... There are multiple terms, and I think we came up with about six terms mm -hmm. that are used interchangeably to refer to the one spirit of God the Father. And that's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, my spirit, um, the Holy Spirit. All these different terms, they're not multiple spirits or persons, but just one, God the Father. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is, if you're going to say that it's three persons or however, be consistent. Because now you got nine persons. Yep. So yeah. you got, you might as well go on and be consistent because you got all these other spirits and yeah. we have to acknowledge them because they are of the Lord, God, His. So you got to acknowledge all of them now. Because you, you're right. Like, like what separates the Holy Spirit being a separate person, but the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of the Lord, yeah. the Spirit of God, the Spirit like, of the Father. Like how y'all distinguishing that which right. one you it? are separate, but those... Right. Yeah, no. you, you you have to be scripturally consistent. So, like we always, we're open to discussion and dialogue. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna have to bring scripture that has the Holy Spirit or God the Father saying that the Holy Spirit is separate from me. Or you gonna have to show me in yeah. word where where this is coming. Because we just showed you where He, he said, said and my spirit, yeah. my Holy Spirit. So He said it multiple times. So mm -hmm. yes. And with that, thank you so much for staying an extra five or ten minutes or so. We truly appreciate you guys for watching and wanting to take the time to learn about what the yes. Word of God says. Yeah. We clearly saw that God is what? One spirit yes. on today and all of the scriptures to will be um, at the bottom or at the top um, of the video. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please, please feel free to email us or whatnot and reach out to us. Let us know your thoughts. We would love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our website at gatherinc.org. Like I said, we would love to hear from you. Share um, the word of God. Share the gospel. We're only speaking truth. And the truth is nothing but what? The word, word of God. God. And, the on the and the lesson will be on the website. So please stick around for our next um, yes. gather talk. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye.